Alrighty, so what we're going to be doing is taking a word problem in which I'm telling you what exactly is reacting, and we're going to be writing out a reaction for it. So I'm actually just going to get started. Remember, whenever we're dealing with ionic compounds, which we're about to deal with, remember it's a metal and a non-metal, you need to be crossing your charges. So I'm going to start out, actually, and my first reactant, the thing that goes on the, the compound that goes on the left-hand side, my reactant is sodium hydroxide. Now, sodium hydroxide, in order to write the formula, you got to cross your charges. So I take Na, and the charge of Na is plus 1. Then I take hydroxide, which is one of my polyatomic ions, and you can check it on your table. I'll always give it to you, is negative 1. So when I cross my charges, what you should get for the formula for sodium hydroxide is NaOH. Now, if you want to put parentheses, I won't take off. However, that is not convention. Normally, as long as you only have one polyatomic ion, so one OH, then you don't need parentheses because you're not going to put a 2 or a 3 or even a 1 outside. If I have more than one polyatomic ion, like if I had two of these, for example, then I would put parentheses, and the reason why is because I want two of all of these, and if I just put a two right here, then it would be just two H's. But in this case, I'm not dealing with that, so I'm not even going to put anything. For my next thing, I have sulfuric acid, which I give you the formula for, because until we get to the acid base unit, um, you will not need to know how to write this. So I'm just going to write H. H2SO4. Okay. And then when it says to form, that tells me I need my arrow because I'm forming my products now. I've got water, and so the formula for water is H2O and sodium sulfate. Now, sodium sulfate, I don't automatically know the formula for that, so what I need to do is cross my charges and figure it out because sodium is metal which makes this entire thing an ionic compound. So I have sodium, which is Na with a plus one charge. Sulfate, if you look at your table, it's a polyatomic ion. Don't confuse it with sulfide, which is S2 minus. It's sulfate, SO4, with a two minus charge. So SO4, and it has a two minus charge. Okay, and then I'm gonna cross my charges. So the two, not the two minus, just the two, becomes the subscript for the Na, and then the 1 becomes the subscript for the SO4. So we don't even need to write anything for that, for the SO4. So it's going to be plus Na2 SO4. So notice I didn't put the S, I'm not putting the SO4 in parentheses. If, okay, by the way, I'm almost done at this point. I'm not quite done. I'm just going to have a quick sidetrack. If, for example, I had um, aluminum and sulfate, Okay, aluminum has a 3 plus charge, sulfate has a 2 minus. If I were to cross those charges, so the 3 would become the subscript for the SO4, the 2 for the Al, I would need to write it as follows. It would have to be Al2, and then the SO4 would now need to be in parentheses because I need 3 of the SO4s. So I need to put that in parentheses, and then I put a 3. Okay, so otherwise, um, if I only have one SO4, I don't need to put parentheses. And in fact, the convention is not even to put parentheses at all. All right, so a little sidetrack, just to make sure we're on the same page. So I'm going to go back now and finish this off. I'm not balanced. That's why I'm not done yet. And so I'm going to go. I'm going to look. So I start out. I look at sodium. I've got one NA here. I've got two here because the two just refers to the Na. So I need to put a two out front here. Okay. Remember that in some of these problems, for example, for SO4 and SO4, I can treat them like a polyatomic ion, keeping them together. So if it's the same on either side, you can treat SO4 like one entity. So there's one SO4 on the left-hand side and one right here. So I'm good with the SO4s. For the OH, since I don't have an OH, Specifically here, I can't treat OH like a polyatomic ion, so I'm going to say, okay, I've got two oxygens here, and if you notice, I've only got one oxygen here. So what I need to do is put a two in front. Now this two is going to 
be used both by the oxygen and the hydrogen. So now I've got two times two. I've got four hydrogens on this side, and I've got two hydrogens here plus two hydrogens here. So two plus two is four. Now I'm balanced, okay? And that's it. That's all there is to it. So make sure you're crossing your charges for ionic compounds. Make sure that you um, balance when you're done, and that's pretty much it.